I'm Michael. And I'm Carlene. And this is Our House. We're living our best renovation life. For over 10 long years now. We've pulled off a massive transformation. But still, there's a long way to go. So we're heading out again to see some of the brightest and boldest renovations in the country for some great design ideas and plenty of inspiration. We'll reveal a finished home every single episode. And our place? All will be revealed. Let's, Let's go. go. This episode, we're in the West, the wild, wild West. We're in the Wheat Belt region of Western Australia near a town called Tudie, about 85 kilometres northeast of Perth. We're following the transformation of this run-down farmhouse into a sprawling Hampton-style estate, the scale of which may have never been attempted before in Australia. This is where our story starts, and believe me, this place has plenty of stories to tell. I meet with Natalie Bowen, Hampton's design expert, and husband Mark Bowen, whose family have lived and worked on this farm for five generations. This is amazing. Yeah, it's um, really dry at the moment yeah. because it's like literally January. This is the probably the most horrible time of the year here. Mm -hmm. But that being said, when it's green, it's just beautiful for as far as the eye can see. There's no doubt this is spectacular land and very, very harsh, much like the condition of this farmhouse behind us. You've got plans for this year ready to rock and roll? Yeah, we have. We've actually been just having a, another little squiz at them and, um, you know, these are the plans that we're going to be doing. So we're keeping the original homestead. We'll talk you through, yeah, yeah in why mm -hmm. that is. So yeah. it's got a lot of sentimental value. Yeah. Because um, Mark's actually the sixth generation Bowen. Really? Uh, so his great, 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 great six times over grandfather uh, originally built this house with his hands. Yes. Oh, God, so, <laughs> so there's lots of sentimentality with the home itself. And, uh, you know, we've decided to keep the Bowen name going and uh, going to build a Hampton style. Rural extension. Yeah, extension. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not talking a little add-on here. Natalie and Mark plan to create two huge wings that extend out from the original farmhouse and go up. They plan to salvage what they can from the original structure that was built by hand by Mark's fifth generation grandfather in 1860. That's right. The original part of this house was constructed 160 years ago. An extension was added on in the 70s in 70s style, of course, and most of this will be demolished, taking it back to the original footprint and starting from scratch. Look, to be honest, there's not a lot of value left in this house. There's one of the original old uh, wood ovens, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, then just these rooms here. So these these three bedrooms here are the original bedrooms, and this is all the extension from, from about 30 years ago. So, yeah, right. so we will be keeping, obviously, the old stove in there. So um, if this know. house didn't have sentimental value, it'd probably be easier to bulldoze it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. But sentimental value, it definitely has in spades. Well, Mark's dad was actually born here. Wow. So that yeah. in itself is just so cool. unbelievable. Yeah. So, you know, they've had family reunions and they've come up and, you know, had lunches and they talk and reminisce about the old times. So the stories that we've heard, you know, is that Granddad Bowen, you know, great, great Granddad Bowen used to sit in there. That was his sitting room. He used to look out the window. Yeah. You know, as kids, they used to run in and oh, go into, you know, really cute. You can even see a little old server in there. So those sorts of little things we're going to keep. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a lounge room in here. We've got a five places that we're going to try to keep. And then when Mark's um, dad married his mum, they actually lived in one of the end rooms, and that's where his two sisters were born. So massive sentimentality yeah. and trying to impart a little bit of that with our kids. Yeah, I love that. So here we are in the old kitchen. This is the original, one of the original wooden stoves. So that's probably that? one of the old things that, that we're lucky enough to still have here. Yeah. And um, other than that, there's not much of value. You'll see the old mud brick 
here where it's literally being washed away. Um, so this is actually one of the sides that isn't going to stay, unfortunately, yeah. because it's just not structurally sound. Yeah. So yeah. two of the sides that have to come down and that's how we're going to build out along and up. So in the whole scheme of things, it'll actually all come together really beautifully and be still have that really old school feel, but be very kind of Hampton style. And this is what Natalie does so well. I can't wait to see how she applies her classic Hamptons touch to a house of this scale, far, far from the coast. My dream has always been that original sort of Hamptons, you know, the great rooms, you know, those huge big rooms. So, you know, to his, <laughs> his you know, come on, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. This gives us the opportunity to do that and have that sort of style in Australia on our little rural farm. It will be quite a sight out here amongst the windswept plains. This land talks of hardship and extreme weather. Mark tells us the story of Michael Bowen, the original builder of this house. Michael was a convict, tried for stealing a sheep to feed his family and sent to the new country to do his time on the East Coast. He was eventually pardoned and came west where he bought this land in 1859. He worked tirelessly on the house while also holding down a job up the road, working after hours and on the weekends, laying the mud bricks that still remain today. Sadly, just before completion, Michael's wife contracted pneumonia. Tragically, she died before the house was complete, never getting to see the finished home. The homestead is named in her honour, Patricia. And Patricia is ready to be reimagined for the next 160 years. It will take a lot of work and they'll need to pour their hearts into this to do it justice. This is a passion project for Natalie and Mark. Mark was brought up on a farm and they hope to keep that experience alive for the next generation of Bowens, showing them what it truly means to live on the land. But will the home be too large and too luxurious to garner that feeling? I'm very yes. excited to see the end result. Yeah, we are too. Many people think we're insane, but... Yeah. You're a little bit insane. <laughs> we are a bit insane. But I think mm. all renovators are. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And this is definitely an interesting project, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so let's get after it, eh? I can't wait to see how they blend the old and the new and create something really unique that has never been seen before on this scale in Australia. Welcome back to Tudie, about an hour out of Perth in Western Australia. We're following the transformation of this 1860s farmhouse into a huge Hampton-style homestead. The house and the land had been in the Bowen family for five generations, and Natalie and Mark hope it will continue to be for five more. They have big plans for this project, and when I visited, I was shocked to learn they had planned to complete the home in just six months. So, of course, the next time that you come here, hopefully, this will all be completely transformed. What's your timeline? Uh, not very long. We're looking at about six months. What? This is all going to happen fast. First, Mark and his brothers get to work demolishing the previous extension and bringing the house back to its original structure. After that is the arduous task of getting out of the ground. This means all the plumbing must go in and the slab formed and poured. And that's when I arrived. Today I'm checking out Mark and Natalie's renovation and I'm super excited for this one. Carleen's told me a lot about it and from all her reports, it's going to be pretty impressive. Get this one up here, mate. Initially on the way out, I was thinking that we're driving and driving and it's a long way from the city. Thanks, mate. Good day. Carleen's going to kill me when she sees this Uber bill. Walking up the driveway, it all made sense to me why Mark and Nat decided to move out here. There's rolling hills as far as you can see. It's perched on top of a hill, so you're getting a nice, cool breeze. This place is magic. When people come here, I think they get a bit of a shock that it's so vast and there's just so much land. Hey, Nat. Hi, Mark. How are you? How are you going? Buddy, what are you doing in the country know, without the crew? No, I'm a city boy. I'm your typical city folk, and I've come all the way out here without a hat, so uh, old Nat has hooked me up with the old fashioned Akubra. Boy, don't I look good. You know, one of the things that just blew my socks off is when he came, he didn't have a hat. Now, we all know, country, you need to have a hat. There you go. That was an expensive Uber ride. 
not. You can take the boy out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the boy. Is that how it goes? Well, welcome to the country, Outback WA. It is certainly Outback. Yeah, you can't get more Australiana than this, can you? No, you can't. And look at this farmhouse. When I first rocked up on site, it was all systems go. There was steel getting delivered, there was windows getting delivered. Now we've got the pad down and we've got all the plumbing in. It's going to be great to show Michael around exactly the size of what this property is going to be. This is the original home of Mark's fifth generation's family, wow. built in 1860. So we're going to show you today what we're going to transform it into because it is going to be really not an 1816 house. We're turning it into the Hamptons farmhouse. I don't think I've ever seen an 1860s house. 1860. I love the story that this place has been in Mark's family for five generations. Um, and I think it's great that Mark and Nat are going to such an effort to keep those original features. It'd be a shame to see that building get demolished. So the design is absolute genius. Having the, the new wings on either side of the old farmhouse, I think is gonna look spectacular. And going by the renders that Nat showed me, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing this build finish. We'd had this property for about two years and the dream obviously always was, and the first thing that I did was designed up the wish, you know, dream home. Never thought that it would really come to fruition, but, you know, here we are in the making, creating it all. Didn't think it was going to be as big and, of course, it's huge. Um, but, you know, again, we're just so excited that it's going to be kept in the family and I'm able to really do what I want to do as far as a Hamptons house is concerned. I've got to be honest, when I first heard you were going to do a Hamptons home out here in country WA, <laughs> I originally thought, oh, that seems a bit weird. But now that you explain it, it makes complete sense. When you actually go to the Hamptons, you see the most extraordinary farmhouses actually on farmlets because that was originally what the Hamptons was used for. It wasn't until probably 20, 30 years ago that the celebrities started going, oh, hang on a minute, we're from Manhattan, drive to the beach and the coast, why don't we put these houses on the coastline? So that's how people started to know the Hamptons. But in its day, they were farmhouses. So it's just awesome to be able to create that here. So we've actually done a lot of the groundwork literally here. So we've got the pad down, we've done all the earth moving and all the site works and that was laborious and uh, really um, a hard job to do given that we're in a rural property. So a lot of the excavation had been done, all the plumbing now has been done and you know one of the things that I didn't realise, it's very easy to do suburbia builds and renovations. What's difficult is when you're on a big property and especially a rural property, where do you put your toilet sumps, where do you have your water coming from? So you also have to think about design-wise how all that's got to come together. So that was a really big thing for us. You know, there's a lot of time getting to this stage. Now that the frames are on site, it's going to be exciting for them to see everything go up and I think it's going to happen quickly. I can't wait to see these frames go up. These are true core steel frames. Strong, straight and precise. They won't twist or warp over time. All important factors to consider out here as Mark knows all too well. I guess the reality is, had you guys not taken on this build, this place would probably fall down to the ground in the over the next 10 years or so? Yeah, absolutely. Look, to be honest with you, Michael, this place has been uninhabited for probably 15, close on 20 years, and um, and it was in a bad state of repair. We had a situation where a bushfire went through in 2012, and frankly, that's when the damage was done. It took out all the old sheds that were over here as well, a lot of historical stuff in the sheds, and um, it came lapping up to this particular house, burnt most of that shed as well. And um, and ever since that time, you know, it, it hasn't been in, in good shape at all. And um, we got to the point where we thought, you know what, um, if we don't do something now, and it's something we've spoken about for a lot of years, is we'd love to, you know, to be able to preserve Wongamine for the history of, of our generation and beyond. Well, this is going to be one amazing build. It's got everything. History, incredible design, and plenty of challenges. And at the helm of all this is Chippy Ben from Carport Co. This is the first time he's been on site, and I was keen to hear his thoughts. So I've been brought on by Nat today. Uh, I was coming out to have a look around. Uh, we're going to be doing the carport, some James Hardy cladding, got the verandas to go through. So plenty out here to do. How do you think the boys are going to go out here in this heat, mate? Because this is country. This is country. 
They're going to have their Cubras, so they'll be they'll be fine, I think. And have you worked with um, James Hardy Linear before? Have you used that product? Uh, yeah, we've done it a couple of times. Definitely not on this scale, and we're excited to see what happens. All right, mate, we'll see how you go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, cheers. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing this all come together, but today, my time has come to go. All right, guys, well, you got lots to do, so uh, thanks for showing me through, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, fantastic. You have to come and stay. All right. See ya. See ya. Where do you think he's going? He's going walkabout. Walkabout? Oh, Australia. He's going walkabout. Go east, they told me. You know, I think after being out here for the day, I'm converted. Welcome back to Tudie, about an hour out of Perth in Western Australia. We're following the transformation of this 1860s farmhouse into a huge Hampton-style homestead. Just after Michael left, things really started to get going. The next thing that we're doing with this build is really resurrecting the whole thing. It's going to be put together literally like a Meccano set. It's going to happen within two to three weeks, which is just phenomenal. I mean, it's something that doesn't normally happen in normal builds, and that's because we are actually using the steel frame. And would you believe this is only day two of framing? So right now we're standing in what we call the great room and the reason it's termed a great room is that we have these huge soaring rake ceilings in, we've got incredibly beautiful windows and then outwards we've actually got these gorgeous bifold doors. There's nothing more exciting to a designer and builder than to be able to walk through the space they've created. Now the frames are coming up, Natalie can feel the very expansive scale of the rooms. This is the north wing, a large open plan room with the kitchen and living. Over on the south wing, there's also been progress. Standing in our second living room here, upstairs we're having a mezzanine floor and again another big open plan area. Uh, here is going to be our bedroom, the main bedroom with beautiful French doors going out and we have an ensuite over here as well. The other thing that's going to be happening is actually putting in all the windows. I mean that's going to be an absolute masterpiece putting that in and then roof on and then we're actually going inside. Every detail is poured over by the crew and every material has been carefully chosen for these conditions. Like this innovative decking product from New Tech Wood that is completely maintenance free. The textual feel of this product has just blown my socks off. And some innovative tech. A 3D render for the huge scaffolding that will go up next. I find this quite fascinating. Yep, so what we've got here is we've got the 3D design of the building with the actual scaffold around it. With this kind of design, you can actually see what what the scaffold's gonna look like once it's all in. Here comes the real thing. So we've just got all of our scaffold arriving, um, which is again, another huge step for us. Uh, this is gonna be wrapped around the whole building. And I was just saying to the guys, you know, for me, this is actually one of the best parts because you start actually seeing again, how big this is gonna be. Just a couple of weeks later and the framing is complete and it looks spectacular. The Hamptons farmhouse that we've built has actually gone up so incredibly fast. The design itself, the structure, the way that it feels, it just feels incredibly solid, which was just so important to us given that this was our heritage. It was my husband's fifth generation farmhouse. So to know that this is going, going to go on for generation and generation is just incredible that we know that this product's going to stay true. The deliveries just keep on coming. Something that will really give this house the Hamptons look is the cladding. So when we design a beautiful Hampton style home, one of our go-to products is this linear product. The reason is, is that it gives it that beautiful, opulent weatherboard look that creates those gorgeous streamlined lines and creates the layers that we want to have. So it's all about the detailing and when you're using the cladding around the whole house, it actually creates those amazing details that really screams Hamptons. Another important component is the roof. So one of the deliveries that we're getting today is from Colourbond. And a part of this build is to really try to traditionally keep the integrity of that Hamptons farm look. So we've actually chosen a surf mist with the Colourbond with all the gutters and all the downpipes. And even our old home is gonna get an incredible new facelift with this roof. So excited it's being delivered today. 
A couple of months later, the scaffolding is up and the roof of the north wing is almost complete as work on the south wing gears up. The colour of this roof really pops against the big skies and expansive landscape. And with these V-Lux skylights, not only will the rooms be flooded with natural light during the day, but looking up at the night sky will be a treat. Now that the roof is nearing completion, Natalie and Mark will start to get ready for some of the interior features. One of these is home automation. Brett from Quantify Technology is bringing his A-game with a full system going in. Not only does this technology give you easier and safer living, it's good for the environment too, allowing you to manage your energy use efficiently. We've got a, a range of devices that will go into the home. It will sync automatically, in this case, with Amazon Alexa, and it will allow you to control Alexa, close the blinds. It will allow you to um, use an app. If you're away from the home, did I switch the lights off or I'll switch them off? And it allows the switch to operate like a switch. At this stage, Natalie also needs to lock in the electrical and plumbing placement, as this will impact the design choices of the finishes and furniture. My name is Natalie Bowen and I'm a <laughs> consistent furniture mover. Um, so, <laughs> you know, ability to be able to, you know, make sure that we have internet and TVs and, you know, all everything that needs to go around there. So that's probably why we're driving you in, up the wall. We know from following Natalie's previous builds that she works from furniture first, which means everything going into this room has already been selected and the room designed around its size and placement. And that's exactly how she She's approaching the farmhouse project. Well, this is all coming together perfectly. After the break, Dave Franklin comes to Tudier. Now I'm looking how big the job is and now I'm getting scared. Yeah. <laughs> because this is a monster. And later, we reveal this amazing home. While work continues on the farmhouse, Natalie takes the opportunity to head back into town and check in with some of her suppliers. It's a whistle-stop tour to keep abreast of everything that's about to come to sight. Let's go. First stop is Silverline Cabinetry, who are custom-making the wardrobes for the original part of the farmhouse. Hampton style, but with modern touches. Tick. Next, it's off to Blum, who are creating the heart of the home, the kitchen. Here in the test drive room, Natalie can maximise the kitchen's functionality. Blum also have some space-saving and organisational solutions that'll make your heart sing. Then it's off to Medici Stone and Granite to check out these stain and heat-resistant Carrara marble look bench tops that will go into the laundry and scullery. Even better than the real thing. A quick stop at DMS Spray Solutions to choose the front doors. And then, the all-important centrepiece to any home, Natalie visits Constantino, who is supplying her beautiful kitchen bench top. Wow, I think it's time to get back on site. And just in time too. Natalie and Mark have big plans for the landscaping. And when you have big plans, there's only one man for the job. Natalie and Mark have asked Dave Franklin to come up with one of his biggest designs to date. Dave visited the site as the pad was going down and came up with a design he thought would match the scale of the house. Now that the frames are up and he has seen the scale of the project, he might have to go even bigger. Everything is bigger in the West. Look at the progress that's going on here. I know. So, it's, I mean, since the last time that you were here, we literally just yeah. had pad down, right? The concrete slab was getting done. OK. And yeah. that was when it was all exciting. Now I'm looking how big the job is and now I'm getting scared. Yeah. <laughs> because this is a monster. There was a rumour going around 1,000 square metres of pavement, and I don't, yeah. think, I don't think we've ever designed 1,000 square metres of paving, you know, in the last couple of years that I know of. So oh, that yeah. is just showing the size of this house. I reckon we get around the house, have a look at it, and yeah. let's work out our plan. All right. There's a pool going in here with Aqua Techniques, and um, yeah. you're not going to get this, but um, it's called the colour Hamptons Blue. Hamptons Blue? Yeah, so how awesome is that? Because Did you Hamptons. register that as Nat <laughs> Hamptons Blue Bowen? So let's talk about the fire pit, looking at the timing that we have, the build, yes. the budget. Yes. Me getting nervous, yeah. all of those combined there, I think that we've got to redesign this part here. So yes. I would suggest that, you know, because I didn't know that you were going to have the canola behind here yes. as well. So that's quite a feature, and yeah. that's obviously yeah. been a feature that you guys have had from the start. Yes. So I think let's get rid of the arbour. 
let's put more emphasis on the fireplace. Yes. yes. Let's find some old stone from that's going to be local. Or so we'll find something around here, I'm sure. Yeah, if yeah, not, we'll find some gold, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, let's have this beautiful silhouette of a fireplace that's behind the pool yeah, area. Gorgeous. Let's make the fireplace a bit smaller. Yes. And it'll be a little bit more cosier. Absolutely. Cheaper yes, and like achievable. Yeah. All right. Oh, so yeah. I think so. I yeah. think that's what we've got to head with, and we'll bring that in so it'll be almost part of the pool, so it'll sit like it's floating behind yeah, the nice. pool. Okay. I so think that's perfect. if we attack that, then I'm not as nervous. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Done. Good. It was one of the windiest days on record, so really there was nothing else to do but head to the local. Such a special town and a special project to match, I can't wait to see Dave's finished landscape. If he ever makes it out of the pub, that is. Just a few weeks later, we're back on site for another busy day at the farmhouse. You know, arriving up here today, there's a lot going on. We've got air conditioning going in, we've got mouldings being measured, we've got cabinetry being measured. We're still going hard on all the cladding. Um, things that have actually been finished at this particular point are all the colour bond roof has actually now been um, come on and you can see the beautiful match that we've actually chosen in the surf mist. Now that the sky on linear weatherboards are going up, we're getting glimpses of that Hampton's look Natalie and Mark are going for. It's nearly finished, That's it's it. nearly over. <laughs> it's been every screw's gone in, so we'll get this last little bit on and we're done. Woohoo! Well done. The end is in sight. The day the scaffolding comes down will be a special day indeed. As Natalie says, achieving the Hamptons look is all in the detail, and in charge of a lot of that detail is Bruno from Aerostone. These guys will be making the window sills, decorative vents for the gable, and wrapping every single post in a Hampton style column. Okay, so Aerostone is a, a product that uh, we basically take the Hebel block, which yes. is well known, and we've developed machinery over the years to actually shape it and profile it to whatever anybody needs for their homes or commercial properties and so on. Obviously with heritage buildings and so on, they're all unique. I mean, the, the, the art of doing that type of mould's been lost, so we just replicate whatever's on the site. And that comes down to the type of machinery we have where uh, it's a fairly cost-effective way of reproducing those shapes and profiles. Yeah, gorgeous. And, and for me, it's kind of like, you know, the accessorising of a yeah. home. So, yes, you know, it's bling. all the all the bling that's going to go on yep. the house. So we're going to do some beautiful decorative columns um, yep. around the home, which is going to be, I, I, in my opinion, I think that's going to be the icing on the cake. Yeah, you've got a lot of columns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Every single post. These are the details that will really set this home off. Just a minute ago, I was downstairs and I looked up and I've got to tell you, I think it was the most excited I've been since all of this has started. I mean, this, this actually makes it look like home. As the new wings are constructed with all new materials, there's debate over what to do in the original rooms. If these walls could talk. The next few months, progress is quick. The new tech wood decking surrounds the house, the steel poles are wrapped, the floorboards go down and the stairs are installed. Natalie jets to Melbourne to choose the handles and hardware. Kitchen and cabinets go in, lights are hung, rooms are painted, outside the pool is in and the landscaping is kicked off. Back at our place on the Gold Coast and we've had one of our biggest days yet. Today we had so much happen, um, it was hectic on site. We had um, Fallon here putting in all our goodies, all our CCTV, all the electrical stuff going in, all the lights from Beacon went in. Uh, we had painters, we had our tilers who were grouting. Uh, we had this amazing bench seat go in, which um, we've been waiting for for a long time. We had our zip water tap go in, um, which I have been waiting for about 10 years for. I'm so excited about this zip hydro tap. Boiling, chilled and sparkling water. Even matching a tap with our style was a breeze too. Yeah. I think when there's a lot of trades on site and you sort of need to be everywhere at once, the pressure is on um, and there's also always still decisions to be made and I think having to make a million micro decisions in a really compacted space and time, it's, it's a lot. So we always get to the end of these days and 
we're a bit wrecked and a bit frazzled, but know that it'll be worth it. So let's just focus in on a few highlights from the day. There's many. I'm actually very excited to see the end of our tiling process on the deck because well, it's been about five days. I chose a fairly intricate, complicated pattern um, using the PGH bricks and I guess we always think everything's going to be, take so much less time than it actually does. So worth it though because it's almost like a real work of art out there. We've also had these amazing kitchen farmhouse sinks from Abbey installed. They've introduced a bit of the traditional into an otherwise modern space. Also, the laundry and powder room walls have been finished in a product called Estinto Levigato by Luxury Wall Finishers. It's an all-natural material made up of crushed marble and lime that's applied to create an interesting organic effect, ideal for use in wet areas, and links the two areas together perfectly. Also in the powder room sits our red-hot trepe basin from Concrete Nation. This is a beauty to behold. I love the red iron colour of this basin against the nude of the walls. Bold colour can feel like a risk, but it's almost always worth it. And with our brass tapware from ABI Interiors and complementing brass flush from Broadware, well, when we're finished, we'll have ourselves a powder room out of a magazine and a powder room in which to read magazines. There it is. Welcome. Welcome to our new home. Today I was running around like a chicken with its head cut off. I was, you know, putting up gutters. I was finishing the cladding, um, just trying to stay in front of everyone. And of course, you know, there's a million questions, um, but you know, that's renovating. And that's renovating to a tight timeline. So we're used to it, or we're getting used to it. Glutton for punishment. Back at Natalie and Mark's place in Tourdier, progress has been strong. It looks like it's all coming together. After the break, we head west for the big reveal. Well, the day has finally arrived. The transformation is breathtaking. We've seen little glimpses of what Natalie and Mark have in store for us at the farmhouse. We're pretty excited. And I think that this will exceed their expectation because of the work that's been done. It's amazing. Oh, it's, a lot's happened since you guys I'm have last been here. I'm sort of in shock. <laughs> it's just this massive transformation. When I was here, I just, there's no way I could have imagined this would be the end result from what it was. Yeah. All you saw last time was literally the old home and I think the last time you were here, it was cement slab. So... It was. Yeah, lots yeah. happened in the last 11 months. I feel like we're giving the viewers a bit of a false sense of timeline because <laughs> this has only been like 11 months. Yeah, I know. But we did it, so... Yeah, it's been quite an incredible journey the whole time and uh, it's been stressful, it's been enjoyable. Well, we've laughed, we've cried, we've screamed. That's that's renovating. <laughs> and that's what we have. <laughs> Come in and let's go and have a look, yeah, shall we? Yeah, we're excited. Come let's through. have a look. Walking through that front door, you know, I was super impressed by the height of the ceilings. Uh, but then looking around, you know, it's all about the detail. They've got, you know, wall panelling and, um, you know, Nat's got vignettes galore. I just recently learnt that word, so I just wanted to use it. Oh, so this home is a smart home. So we have smart phones, and now we're going to have a smart home. So fully automated, we have a new member of our family, Alexa, from Amazon, and everything in this home can be turned on, turned off, um, have beautiful scenes set all through quantified technologies, which I absolutely love, because it just makes your house so easy to live in. Yeah, and I guess with a house this size, you want to be able to click your fingers yeah. and make stuff happen. Absolutely. One of the things that I love loved about designing this home was really trying to find something that was going to work for us. We had to also keep in keeping with a farmhouse style. So this whole kitchen was really designed about these pendants. I'd seen these, loved them and went, I have to have those over an island bench. I hadn't seen it done before. So even though I wanted to try to keep that Hampton style, I wanted to try to give a bit of character to make it my personalities. And again, I agonised over this colour that you'll understand because it's one of those things that you go, oh, what am I going to use? So I think we had about five different colourways in here and watching the shades and sun and everything go down and then this was the winner. Um, and then, of course, having this beautiful three-metre bench with nothing on it just makes an incredible 
buffet spot for people when they come and entertain and, you know, have a lot of people over. It's just been amazing. Yeah, that's how I feel an island bench should be. It's sort of like a big chopping block. Absolutely. Um, because as soon as you put a sink in there, it just creates a bit of mess. So yeah. I love that you've done that. I can definitely relate to colour agony because we've done it in our own home. But yeah, this feels spot on. You can talk colour and detail all day, but I love how good that pot filler is. I want to just get, oh, that's my favourite part. What it is. Fantastic. <laughs> One of the biggest questions that we have is what's that on the wall? Now, anybody that knows it is a pot filler. So when we can go and get some crayfish or yabbies, you can put it on there or if you're making a big soup in winter and you turn it on and you don't have to lift it and take it from sink to stove. And I just think it's a really cool feature. So cool. The one thing that you do really well is make your homes feel lived in. You can't tell that this home has just been finished because you filled it. Yes. 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 It's I was actually going to ask if there's anywhere I could sit down. <laughs> Well, Take as fish. you know, Michael, from the houses that you've been in a mine before, I do love myself a chair. So. You do love yourself so a chair. So we have got some that are um, best spoke and some are customised, but we've used some incredible um, people like Molnick for our beautiful sofas. We've had beautiful upholstery done. We've had um, the home styling warehouse. So we've had huge collaborations with different people and partnering to get the best result for this because I didn't want it to look cookie cutter. I wanted to make sure that it was a really um, characterised feel in here. There's a handful of cushions you'll see as well. Just a handful. Yeah, <laughs> too many. But I think the other thing that really makes this room um, not only the high ceilings, but the detail in the windows that we've done, but also having some really unique lights. And what about the build process, Mark? Because you were project managing this job. How did it go? I oh, look fantastic. Look, it's a, it's a huge job, as you can see. And, um, and obviously, for us as well, it's been a labour of love as well. We, you know, when you first came through, it was diabolical, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we I often, still liked it even back then, actually. Yeah, it was, it was derelict for the most part, the old house. And um, it was built in the 1860s, as you know. So um, for us, uh, we, we used to come out here and go, are we insane? You know, yeah. we, we'd sit around going, I'm sure you had that initial thought when you guys came out the yeah. first time. But but, um, but no, look, it's been fantastic, and we've been we've been privileged to have some really good trades around as well that we've worked with. And uh, but it's been it, it went you know quite quickly, eleven months. But, you must um, be cracking the whip. That's why. Yeah, but we <laughs> we had a goal to try to knock it off a little bit faster. But we are an hour and a half from you know from Perth. So yeah. Well, that's probably one of the hardest things about this build, I guess, is probably yeah. getting the trades to come out this far. You know, because it's it is only an hour and a half, but you know for a tradesman, you know, who's yeah, forgotten something. We had a lot of really fabulous local guys, like our electrician, local, unbelievable. Um, you know, so they had a connection to the house as well. But then the guys that came all the way from Perth and were just dedicated and did what they did, phenomenal at what their work was. So, you know, we had some good, bad and the ugly, but, you know, all in all, as in all renovation and builds, you know, the guys that end up finishing the job have just been incredible. But yeah, look, I was, I was cracking the whip. And also remember, when we first got the house, so when we first bought the property, we were just going to fix it up a little bit and have it as a little weekender. Um, you know, ground the kids, you know, get them outside, you know, with a few cows and sheep. And that plan has now exploded. Yeah. Mm. That's how renovations so. work, though. Yeah. You start off with this little plan and then you go, I might as well do that. I might yeah. as well do that. That's exactly I right. I might as well add these two massive wings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the break, the tour continues. What I love about this room is that you can really take in the scenery. Well, we've seen the North Wing, time to check out the South Wing. I love those spaces that feel like a little haven, a little sanctuary. I think I would probably sit there the most. So, Mark, how has the process been for you? Because it's a great story, you know, this house obviously being, you know, in your family for years, years. and, you know, and you've... You must be so proud with what you've achieved with the house. We really wanted to bring it all back to life. As you saw, it was quite derelict before. And, um, 
And so now we've turned into really something quite special. And I, and I love that you have paid homage to, to the original home, you know, with those features like that amazing brick wall as you walk through that hallway. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. We try to maintain as much as we could. Obviously, there was a lot that we had to take down, as you know, on the, on the north wing and the south wing. When we got the phone call from his cousin to say, look, we know that you guys are quite sentimental about the old homestead. Would you like to have the opportunity to buy it? And of course, at that stage, it was like, how are we going to do that? Do we really need to do that? and then I knew that it was his passion and his dream, so we did it. It's a sixth generation family home here and um, and to be honest, um, I think we can be pretty proud of what, what we've done here. I think our uh, ancestors will be sitting up there and, um, and hopefully giving us some well wishes. What I love about this room is that you can sit in here on a 45 degree day out of the elements, in the comfort of the air conditioning, but really take in the scenery and, and sort of make it all worthwhile. We're very fortunate. We're up on a very high hill, as you can see as well, and we've got literally panoramic views all the way around. And and this room is, is beautiful. So I start with furniture in mind. So every single space, I already had in my head the sofas and how the spaces wanted to look. So I knew that I wanted to have two three-seater sofas. I knew I wanted to have two sort of separate sitting areas each side. So then this is a library slash retreat room. One of the things I really wanted in all of the areas was I, I'm a white shutter girl. So we've got these really unique, incredible little Ooh, that look on. like shutters. Oh. I've got all the bells and whistles here. So this is actually automated again, but this is from Luxaflex. So when they open, and you can actually have them completely open up. It gives you an, the enhanced look of being able to see all the way out. But then when you want them closed, you can close them off and they look like a Roman blind. That's so cool. it was like tick, yeah. tick, tick, Perfect tick. Solution. Yeah. Perfect solution. Perfect solution. Yeah. So it gives it a softness as well, which is just amazing. So you guys were lucky, you know, you had the original house and you, you left that for the bedrooms, but just talk us through the rest of the layout. So the original building are the bedrooms, bathroom, powder room, and then these wings, we did a studio. Um, in that particular room, we started out just wanting a little kitchenette and we end up doing a beautiful kitchen. So, and we chose navy in there to be a little bit different. Um, and then as we come down, we've got main bedroom, ensuite, walk-in robe, and then this retreat room. But then also we wanted to have upstairs. And again, going back to, I, I knew I wanted to create these different looks in these different spaces. And that's what it's all about when you are styling and layering and bringing in pieces to make it look eclectic, but still not disjointed. So I think I've done that okay. You've done extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Ticket approval. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong about the seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you have two oh, separate areas in here. Two so, options. Wow. Yeah. This space is amazing. Look, again, you, you know, this has been such a evolving space. You know, this one's, oh, we can have a ping pong table. I'm going, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, man like, cave. This is perfect, perfect man, man cave. cave. For me, you know, I think the, uh, the mezzanine is a missed opportunity for Mark. You know, he had his chance to put his pool table, ping pong table. We'll make it a real man's cave, so I reckon uh, he needs to put his foot down um, and, uh, you know, pull out some of those couches and start putting those manly touches in. Oh. Look, one of the things that we wanted to um, really make sure that we had in here was enough light because in any sort of mezzanine lofty area, it can be quite dark. So we've had these amazing Velux uh, in here that they open and close automatically. They've got blinds on them when it's too hot. and. As you can see, they just work really well. We think every house needs a V-Lux. Like, we've got them all through our place and it yeah. does make such a difference yeah. to every area. Absolutely. Absolutely. And letting the hot air out as well, it's amazing. Yeah. It gets quite warm up here. We wanted to make sure that we had enough detail in here. So again, we had this incredible wainscoting through here, which is in trim. We've had a lot of artisans, you know, like the staircase, the had an chippies. amazing guy, um, an urban chippy that did this. I think any building project does come down to the quality of your trades, you know? 100%. Well, driving in, we saw a pretty exceptional outdoor entertaining area, um, almost looking like a resort. I'm pretty excited to see that. Yeah, the Bowen Resort, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go and have let's a go. look at that because right. it's yeah. phenomenal. I'm excited. Have this a seat. Yeah. <laughs> Just when I thought there couldn't be any more seating in this house, <laughs> I go outside to the pool area and it is seating galore. 
This really feels like the ultimate farm resort. And I feel like I'm out in the elements because that heat, oh, yeah, it's it does kind of hot. And this is a cool day, I might say. Wow. So, um, <laughs> look, cool. this, this is really a work in progress of what we're doing here with the landscaping. We've worked with Dave Franklin and, you oh, know, he's... He's done... a shady character. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it was wanting to be resort slash farm slash Hamptons. It really had, again, so many different elements that I wanted to jam into this space. But one of the things that we wanted to do is that we've got this beautiful, cladded James Hardy house with all the trimmings and all the details with that gorgeous colour bond roof. And it was that beautiful greys and whites and we wanted to then bring this through here, having this beautiful pool. Really wanted to emulate the Hampton style pools that are very long and thin. This is from Aqua Techniques and it is just, as you can see, divine. I'm absolutely jumping in that later. Yeah, that we're gonna put so you inviting. In later. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we didn't want to use too many tiles, so we wanted to try to keep that indoor-outdoor feel using the Beaumont tile with just a little spattering, beautiful urban turf. I really wanted to have it feel like a resort and have all this incredible seating. Um, this is a girl from Sydney that she's designed all of this from Osseo Bell and oh, wow. she's just made them so comfortable and beautiful but still keeping that Hamptons feel, which I love. Yes. And, of course, layering that with all the beautiful Three Beaches fabric from Sunbrella. Uh, I wanted to be able to not have Mark having to cart things in and out all the time. It's not but an option. still have them looking divine. You know, the long-term goal for us is that you'll see the big old shed out the back. That's going to be our next stage where we're going to be building um, or kind of renovating to try to keep that farmy feel, to have, like, weddings and events. Oh, and I think this home is an absolute showstopper and I think, you know, those viewers at home, this style in particular is very popular and I think viewers are going to absolutely love this place. I'm kind of terming it now the Australian house okay. rather than the American Hamptons yeah. because it's got all the Australian element and features that we really want to have, like the wide verandas and all the detail. Well, this whole project feels like a beautiful celebration of our Aussie landscape with reference to the coast with your Hamptons aesthetic um, and a beautiful celebration of the history of your family. So well done to you both. It's beautiful and you've done an exceptional job. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a renovation over 160 years in the making. This historic farmhouse has been resurrected, reimagined and executed to perfection. Now this home is ready to make many more stories for generations to come. On the next Ready, Set, Reno. So from now on, we've just got to give the place a huge clean. All the furniture's got to come in, rugs, art's got to get hung, and then hopefully uh, we'll hit our deadline.